mysterious disappearance of Kathleen Henson and her infant son, Royce, on March the 23rd, 1979, left the community in shock. Kathleen, a music enthusiast who worked at Rogers Records, was last seen leaving her work to drop off concert tickets to her friends. Kathleen was an employee at Rogers Records, located in the 5,000 block of North Peoria Avenue, where she had the privilege of getting concert tickets due to her job. On the night of her disappearance at 11.30 p.m., she called her friends, informing them that she was heading to their residence to hand over the tickets and would reach there within an hour. Kathleen was driving her father's brown four-door 1969 Chrysler sedan. However, both Kathleen and Royce never arrived at their friend's house and have not been heard of since. Kathleen, a divorced woman, cherished her bond with her 10-year-old son, Eamon. On the evening of March the 23rd, she dropped him off at his father's place of business, expecting a short visit. However, fate had a different plan in store. Unbeknownst to Eamon's father, he dropped off the young boy at Kathleen's home later that evening, assuming she was present. Unfortunately, the house was locked, leaving Eamon stranded outside. Determined to find refuge, he managed to squeeze through a window and settled down for the night. As morning dawned and his mother was still absent, Eamon took matters into his own hands. He reached out to his mother's best friend, who promptly contacted Kathleen's parents for help. The discovery of Kathleen's father's abandoned vehicle at the intersection of Ute Street and Peoria Avenue in Tulsa on March the 25th raised concerns. The car was parked askew, a departure from Kathleen's usual precise parking. Despite finding her straw coin purse, driver's license, social security card, baby bottle, and credit card inside the vehicle, there was no sign of Kathleen or her baby. It is perplexing that she did not have any money, extra clothes, or supplies for her son Royce with her at the time. Kathleen's loved ones are convinced she had no connections to the area where the car was found, deepening the mystery. When authorities searched the Henson's home, they found no evidence of a struggle, leaving more questions than answers. Before banishing, Kathleen disclosed her fear of a male acquaintance who had involvement in criminal activities. Initially, her parents believed she had voluntarily decided to take a break from her life. However, as time elapsed and no communication was received from Kathleen or Royce, her parents concluded that something more sinister had transpired. Since 1979, there has been no trace of either of them. The moment Kathleen and Royce were reported missing, the police sprang into action, meticulously searching her car and apartment for any evidence that could shed light on their disappearance. However, despite their efforts, the investigation hit a dead end and was subsequently halted. It was not until 1984 when Kathleen's mother raised concerns about her daughter's case that the authorities decided to reignite the investigation. The unsolved vanishing of Kathleen and Royce remains a haunting mystery, with foul play being a likely factor. It's been a staggering 45 years since Kathleen and Royce vanished into thin air, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions. Despite the passage of time, 
there has not been a single sighting or any significant breakthrough in their mysterious case. During the time when Kathleen vanished, she was 5 feet 7 inches tall, weighed 125 pounds, and had brown hair and blue eyes. Her ears were pierced, and she would have reached 75 years of age today. Royce, on the other hand, would be 47 years old today. If you have any knowledge about this case, we implore you to contact the Tulsa Police Department's tip line at 918-596-9122. Your cooperation could be instrumental in bringing justice to those involved. To wrap things up, I must mention that despite my thorough search, I could not come across any evidence linking her male acquaintance to this story. Surprisingly, his name never appeared in any of the records I examined. It is reasonable to assume that he was cleared of any suspicions early on in the investigation. However, I cannot help but feel that the investigators missed a crucial opportunity by allowing such a significant amount of time to pass between 1979 and 1984. With such a gap, it becomes incredibly challenging to determine what truly transpired. The possibilities are endless. Now, I am curious to hear your thoughts on what might have happened to Kathleen and her baby Royce. Please share your theories in the comments section. Thank you for tuning in, and I will catch you again next Friday.